we're going to be talking about SQL Server data classification, and this is with SQL Server 2019. So I'm going to call out, there's a, there is a, um, a little bit of a difference in Azure SQL Database. I'll, I'll talk about it, but I'm not going to demo that, that today. So it sounds like a good opportunity for me to put together another video for later for our team to, to publish. But what I want you to be aware of is uh, we're going to talk about data classification. So let's get this kicked off. Really quickly about me, um, I am a director of consulting here. I have uh, a couple of certs. You know, you gotta look, gotta brag about them when you can. You can find uh, my occasional blog posts happening in datawheels.com. I've been in Pragmatic Works now for nearly six years, and currently I am uh, responsible for a team of great consultants that we have out in the field. About uh, nearly 40, 40 consultants working with us um, right now. So. That's a little bit about me. Uh, you can get my contact information, LinkedIn. Uh, I use the uh, Data on Wheels email address for you know responses to webinars and things like that. If you want to reach at, reach me, it won't get buried in my work email, but I will you know respond to you from that avenue as well. So, what is data classification actually really about in this scenario? And one one of the things I you know. When I was digging into it, one thing that is always interesting to me is you saw, uh, you know, I'm a certified security engineer. Um, I do a lot of work with data security, whether it's in Power BI, uh, whether, you know, especially around cloud, it became kind of a passion of mine to understand really what do we have in the, um, in the, in the data security realm that actually matters. So as uh, the release of um, the new version of Manager Studio came out. They talk about more, you know, data classification capability. And this is, you know, uh, information policies, protection of your data, GPDR. A lot of this is influencing how we think about our data and what we have to do to manage data today. It, it's really the paradigm has changed quite a bit. And we really, you know, need to start tracking that more closely. So there's third party tools that can help with that. And there's a number of things happening. But the Microsoft team has been working through, especially you know, starting in Azure first and bringing this down to SQL Server and SQL Server 2019, it's becoming really important for us to understand, you know, where does you know what does it mean to do the next level of security where we're actually paying attention to the data we're storing, not not just the fact that we're storing data that could be confidential. So I mean, if you look at where we are in SQL Server today. And the capability is that you know we we love and we've grown through and with you know encryption, you know encryption at rest. That data when it's at rest is encrypted. We can use always encrypted functionality, which basically encrypts everything from beginning to end from the database through to the application, uh, making it nearly impossible to to crack that data um, prior to actually you know using it. Right. So the applications control it. Uh, role level security. Ooh, look at that, I have a misplaying my slide, sorry about that. Uh, if I, you know, being able to manage, you can see chunks of data based on their credentials, you know, leveraging Active Directory for authentication, um, Azure Active Directory if you're, you know, running a blended environment. You know, these are all things that we have been doing in the database on different, in different ways, right? You have policies, I'm sure, about how a database is actually deployed into your environment, um, how you're securing that information from, you know, you know, the things we don't talk about as much anymore, or even physical security. Is your data center located in your closet and the only security you have is an unlocked door? Or are you running in a uh, public cloud like Amazon or Azure and you're actually, you know, their facilities are highly secure and, and you can't just go grab a, you know, drive out of there and walk away. So all this has been focused around uh, database level primarily and where we actually are looking at what can we do with the actual storage. A lot of it's been focused on data at rest, but not a lot of it's about what is the data. We're securing the whole thing, the whole picture, but we're not really understanding what type of content we have and what that risk is. With the advent of GPDR and some of the other security requirements coming through even in the US, um, like California, is have, has new rules coming in. I know New York State's had some come in. All those rules are about what we have available and how we're tracking what's there. So what are we looking at? Data classification is a process where we actually identify data 
and say, hey, this data is sensitive. Is it uh, name address? Is it credit card information? Other financial information? Is it considered corporate uh, you know, information that we can actually mark as sensitive? Depending on what you're trying to accomplish in a classification system, you can actually have any type of classification that you're working with. And it could be uh, talking through things like, uh, I, like I said, is this credit card information, is a social security number there? Are, you know, what are you doing about that? And, and how are you identifying that data in your environment? Do you know what actually is existing in your environment? Do you have 4,000 tables? And the security team that, you know, that new security officer, the new CISO that you've hired comes to you and says, so what kind of sensitive data do we store in our databases? And your answer is now at the moment going, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. And now you start scrambling. How do I find an answer? So that's what data classification is labeling is about. Um, other folks need to classify to organize their data and know which group it belongs to. That's really not the focus of this, but you can use it if you have, are able to identify that information. So not only do you classify it, you need to label it. And you want to make sure that you, you know, understand what the sensitive data is. So when it says makes a sensitive data visible in this slide, it, it's really about, hey, um, what sensitive data am I living with today? What do I need to pay attention to? And do I need to do additional security methods to, to solve that? So let's talk about what's available. So SQL Server can help. So as a, as a SQL Server Management Studio 17.5, it actually brought in the data discovery and classification tool. Not sure how many of you have used it, um, it actually does exactly what it says. It's going to go out and it's going to discover and classify your data. It's supported on SQL Server versions of 2012 and later. Now, you can also do some of this classification in Azure SQL Database. That goes through a different process and has handled differently because it's in Azure and it's a part of the Azure audit scheme. So just keep in mind there are two different paths right now for handling classification, even though it's on the SQL Server platform in both cases. So the focus today is down on SQL Server. What I'm going to be working with today is Management Studio version 18.5, which is the latest download. 18.4 gives you the ability to manage information protection policy, so we'll show you what that gives you. I am also running SQL Server 2019 Developer Edition, so Enterprise Feature Set. What got added into 2019 that's not available prior to that, as you can see, the, um, as I note the other versions beforehand, is there's now a system catalog view that really lets you look at the the fields and tables that are there if you want to go query that information directly. And you might find that helpful for building your own custom reporting. We're going to show you the reporting that's that's available out of the box. You might find the need to do custom reporting or um, you can also dump it to Excel, some other things. But just so you're aware, you now have easy access to that data. You don't have to go through the extended properties to figure out the labeling that's happening in, in the extended property set like you would for 2012 through 2017. Now, why I bring that up is I'm going to demo everything in the capabilities within the context of this. So your mileage will vary. You need to, you know, this tells you what you're looking for in your product line to figure out where you can find your information protection policies and or, or where you can find the information, and particularly the, the type and label that we're talking about. All right. And that being said, let me make sure. Oh, yeah, that's, I got one more slide to show you. And then we get to have some fun. So I'm not going to, you know, let me go ahead and get this full size for you. If you're, it doesn't matter which version you're using uh, of Management Studio. Uh, it's the important thing to understand that this is a Management Studio tool. Uh, and we're going to use it in this scenario, but you're going to find it by going under tasks, data discovery, and classification. We're going to classify our data. We're going to look at the report and we're going to look at a protection policy uh, that's set up and what you can do to manage it. So we're actually going to go through the process. I actually have, uh, I haven't actually run this on my current, on the worldwide, sorry, wide world importers database. If you want to follow along and do exactly what I did, you can load up 2019 developer edition and bring in the wide world importers. That's the public database that Microsoft has that we can use for samples and you can use it and classify your data there. So let's just dig in here. So now I'm, I have Management Studio opened. Um, give that a second, make sure everybody can get, I know it takes a little while when I do a screen change. Um, so 
what we're looking at right now is this is a local instance running on my laptop of SQL Server uh, 2019. Lots of SQL servers out there. And we're going to go ahead and run data classification in real time on this on this process. So right now I don't have anything classified. So if you actually go down to tasks and then you see data discovery and classification, we can actually validate that we don't have anything at the moment. We can go ahead and generate a report. And you're going to see right now I should have zero classified information. So at this point, it doesn't know what I have. It's done, it's looking at my database. There's nothing available. No labels have been tagged. Nothing, none of my data has been currently classified or labeled. All right, so let's go back and our next step here will be we're going to actually go to data discovery and classification. We're going to classify the data. So as this fires up, so it's done a pretty quick job. The database isn't that large. Your database may take a little more time if it's a substantially larger database. But you can see right now uh, in my information box right here, it's saying I have 62 columns with classification recommendations. And I can click to view those recommendations. What SQL Server Management Studio has done is it followed a series of rules, which we're going to dig into in a minute, um, and said, hey, these column names may have classified or data that you want to classify or, or mark as sensitive in some way, shape, or form. So as at, when you click the, click the view here, you're going to see that we have a whole list. 62 columns have been identified across multiple schemas, tables, and all that we have. If you if you look at it and go, you know what, I want it all. You can actually click the button and highlight it all, and you can choose to accept all 62. We're not going to do that right now. Uh, let me get this out of the way so we can actually set that report a little better. Um, what we're going to do at this point, we're going to walk through a few things that we find in this report and make decisions. So I'm going to unselect everything. I'm not interested in doing all of them at the moment. I am going to say, all right, well, I don't necessarily care about the application schema. Even though it has a number of pieces in here, it's really not relevant for what I'm trying to do. But I do want to go down to look at sales. So uh, one of the things we're trying to do is make sure we secure credit information that's really relevant to our customers. So looking here, first of all, you notice it's going to tell us the schema. It finds a table and a column name. And it's basing the column name. You know, it's looking for keywords in the column name to understand, hey, is this sensitive information? So like an account open date. Do I consider that confidential or not? Well, let's talk through these pieces right here. So. When I label a, a column to be tracked and classified, I have an information type. So I can see here there's a number of types of information. I got these posted on a slide coming later too. But uh, you know, it could be contact information, credentials, credit card, banking. Uh, is it about their name? Is it another? Is it, is it something that's not available? Date of birth? What, you know, it could be any of these type of information. This is the built-in one. So when we look at what's here right now, I have made no changes to my information policy prior to the, this execution. And this becomes really important about what you want to do as the next step because you can actually make some changes. We'll walk through that uh, when we get to the JSON. So I can do some information here and say, okay, well, for now, I know that account open date is not considered sensitive at all. So I'm going to ignore that one. The credit limit is on the credit card, and I do want to accept it, and I do want to treat it as confidential. So what's my sensitivity label mean? This is actually another label that I can put on there and say, hey, this data is publicly available. It's fine. It's general. If you have to classify every piece of data you have, you're going to be using public and general so you know. So all your columns can be classified. This could take you a little while to work through. As we all know that some tables have a lot of data in them. Uh, we also have the reference to GPDR, GDPR. Sorry, I keep seeing those letters backwards. Um, GDPR that we actually have, you can say, hey, this is specifically something I'm tracking in a GDPR situation. We also mark it highly confidential or make the changes we want to. So at the moment, we're going to say we're going to keep keep sales, keep the credit limit of our customers as confidential. We're going to scroll down and realize what it takes to make a, um, you know, this all this information secure as we want. We're going to label addresses for contact information, you know, so we have that. Uh, the phone number, we're going to keep that as confidential. Um, more po more address information uh, in different tables and so on. You can go through this whole thing. Remember, 62 that we have so far. So let's go and we're going to go down to uh, 
this invoices credit note reason we're going to call this a not a credit card this is actually more of a uh, financial information type we want to deal with and we're going to change it to highly confidential just so we have some variety in there and i believe that pretty well covers make sure i have some contact information some different types that makes reporting a little more interesting so that gives you you know um the information we want that we're looking at was from sales so we like what we have here so what is i'm going to accept the selected so i have a few that are selected i'm going to go ahead and accept those and that's going to change my list so i now have 10 classified columns and you can see here, once again, I can look at it. If I don't want to have this column classified anymore, I can remove it. And I have these 10 ones. I still have the 52 recommendations. So based on the last time it did data classification, which is what we just did, it's telling us that we still have 52 columns that it's recommending that we review and look at. Now, at this point, it's really important to save, as I learned the hard way a couple of times. Now it's all saved, and I have that information. Um, Let's go check out the report and see what we have in the report now. So the report gets run against all that, that same underlying table that's talking about that sys table. And it's gonna tell us that of the 589 columns I currently have available in my database to scan, I have actually classified 19 of them. Three of my tables are contain sensitive data, so I need to be aware of that. And I have three information types I'm currently working with in that context. I got my contact info, credit card, and financial. It will actually lay out the schema and then give, allow me to break down and see all, all that I've already marked as confidential, including my highly confidential flag down here at the bottom for financial reasons. So as you can see, this is built into the system, pretty straightforward. Um, I have the data right, readily available. If I wanna write my own report or do something else, I can actually go against that system table that we were talking about before, write the SQL. I might, I might be trying to integrate Power BI, so maybe I'm pulling your class classification data from SQL Server and classification data from Oracle or some other system, and I want to make sure all that classification data makes in the same reporting structure. This is how you would add the SQL Server classification data into a Power BI report, for instance, you go against that system table. But this at least gives you a high-level overview of what's going on. The other thing to be aware of is sometimes it won't find everything. Go figure, it's an automated system, maybe for whatever reason it didn't find the check we want. So I can actually go to add classification drop my schema in here. So we're gonna, we're gonna go after purchasing for the moment. Grab a table, actually let's go back, back to sales. Grab a table, let's go ahead and pick up customers. And we're going to say that a column that did not get classified and one I wanna actually include, we're gonna grab the customer name. We're gonna say that the customer name is my con is contact info and it's confidential from our perspective. We're gonna add that to the list. Now you can see uh, it's highlighted as being added, but I don't have it saved yet. So it's waiting for me to save it. So I can save that information and I can go back to the report and refresh it. And you'll see that we've added another column um, and the customer name should be in here now as another confidential record. So this whole process goes through here and it's, it's tagging the data. Like I said, if you're looking at something older than SQL 2019, it's actually updating the extended properties of the columns and adding basically a custom extended property to that information so you could have that. Whereas here, this is all being stored in the system table. You're gonna be able to go pull this data however you want to very easily to see the information. All right, so this is, and so let me look at what's, let's see here. I'm gonna make sure I got uh, on my, so I, I did lay out the steps we're doing. We viewed the report, we're good to go. A couple things to be aware of. Um, when you're not using English as one of the, you know, um, you may actually run into a situation where it's not recognized. So your mileage is going to vary on this. I'm going to show you how to get around that and actually what that would mean, right? Um, some of these other types aren't, aren't, aren't quite identified. And right now, I would tell you that every time there's an update to Management Studio, look at the list, see what they've added, see if they've improved this tool. This tool is a part of Management Studio, not SQL Server. And the reason that's important for you to understand is that um, as we look at what's happening, the changes that are being made as you move forward, that you can expect those changes to happen in a faster cycle than if this were a part of the SQL Server release. So we, you can expect new features coming in all the time. 
Here's the built-in information types. We talked about those a little bit. Um, everything from networking, which is IP addresses and, those, and that type of information, national ID, social security number, credit card. These are the flags that, that we already have built in. And then the sensitivity labels are the, you know, the, the smaller list basically saying, hey, what can we do with this data? So I'm gonna stop here for a minute because I want you to consider in your organization, do you already have data classification? with sensitivity labels, as well as how you're gonna classify the data information types. If you do, then the next part is gonna be really important for you to do before you run the classify data tool. It is possible to update the data classification and basically make it so that you can actually get the results that you would like to see in your environment. So let's, talk, let's, let's walk through that for a second here. Going back to Management Studio, if you actually pull out, you know, Object Explorer, you go out to um, our task again, data classification discovery, we classify data and generate report we've already seen. But as we get into this policy file, there is, you can create a JSON policy file and publish it. So when you says set, that's basically, hey, I have created my own policy file that I want to include. You can export the existing one, which is always something I recommend. Keep in mind, those of us that work in SQL Server a lot, forget things like JSON is case sensitive, and you got to pay really close attention to all that. Uh, but you can export the information policy, which I'm going to show you the exported one from mine that's the default. And if you get stuck, doesn't work, you can actually reset the policy so it'll actually do go back to the original version. So when you export it, it exports as a JSON file. So I'm using Visual Studio Code, and I wanted to kind of walk through what's in here so you can understand, you know, you can see and understand and basically make decisions about what you want to do and how you might want to change it. So you look at the basics here. We actually, uh, we're actually layered out as, a co as opposed to, um, we're actually going from sensitivity label into information types within that sensitivity label. So I believe that a lot of this has to be fairly unique and you have to, you know, match it in order. So you know, when you're messing with any file like this, be cautious. So if you look here, the ID that's generated, I'm not sure how we get a new ID, um, but you can see here, we can re relabel the name. So if public is not the name I want, but say I'd rather have it be open to the public, um, that I can put a description around what that's about and rank it and provide it in order. So the rank is where it ranks as far as sensitivity. Order is the order or position in the drop-down list that you see available to you in the classification tool. So this is all supporting the classification tool at this point. You saw general is in there. Um, as we get into some of the deeper levels like confidential, it actually will start looking at display types. So it's saying, hey, uh, it's display name. So it's looking at this next level down saying, all right, here are my information types that are associated with confidential. I'm gonna skip by this one i want to go down to contact info this one yeah so as you look at contact info it, it gives you a description hey this is the data of a person phone number all that kind of thing so let's start looking at the patterns now keep in mind it is actually looking at the pattern for the column name so you can see here that we're looking for email e-mail anything with addr in it street city phone mobile area code postal and zip all right, now at this point, if you are someone who lives in uh, Germany, for instance, or you have German data, potentially German field names, this will not go very well for you. So you're gonna have to actually add more content in here to say, hey, if you know this table is coming from, this, uh, from a German environment, all the field names are in German, they're not in English, so if I want to classify that data, I need to make sure that I have the patterns that actually match the German naming. If we scroll down, you can see that actually come out in uh, see, credit card. Oh, moving down a little bit further. Yeah, so here you start to see some examples of uh, different languages, different type of cards that are being used. Um, right here, so numero, this is all, this, I believe this would be Spanish here. Um, I'm not as good as foreign languages as I would like, but you get the idea. So you're gonna have to potentially 
add patterns to what you want. Um, Microsoft's done a, it's a good starting point, right? But the fact that you can actually customize the patterns to meet your needs and do what you want to do is a big deal when it comes to classifying data. So as you start to look through this list, this is not a small JSON file, just for the record. You can see there's hundreds and hundreds of lines. And you're going to want to, you know, pay attention, try to, you know, use, you make sure you get your code right, um, all those type of things. But this at least allows you to change your information policy so that you can actually have what you want in there. And you can get the list to be what you need for the for those purposes. Now, if you're like me, you're like, great, I've labeled all my data. I've got it customized. I am I feel really great about what I've done. What is next? And this is a part that I, I am actually disappointed about. And I say that because I, you know, we're all data people, right? So well, what do we got? So we looked at those information protection policies, you can customize them. Um Microsoft's going to keep making improvements. That's right. Wait a minute. What about auditing? So this is one of those things where if you're running Azure SQL database, there is auditing support in there. There actually is, you can add an audit log and it will log whenever you hit the fields that are marked certain ways. That is not in SQL Server. So I did some digging and I was, I was actually not, not pleased with my results. So I tried to see if I could create a custom audit specification and have it track it down, but there's really nothing to reference. If for whatever it's that piece is not that those dots aren't quite connected, right? So if you are looking to do this as a full auditing thing, you're going to have to build your build the next piece of auditing for yourself. And you know, of course, we've all been if those of us have been doing auditing in databases for a while, yeah, we've used triggers before and. We knew that so we can actually log when someone hits the field and they're not supposed to hit or all those kind of things. That's just part of that puzzle, right? As you look through and figure out what your next steps are, um, we, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm going to make a pretty large assumption. Microsoft's going to continue improving this. This is really important for them to do. And they're leading with Azure SQL database because they already have some of that capability in there. If this becomes something that's really important for you, there's a couple of things I would definitely look at. Realistically, one, can I move this to Azure and potentially take advantage of the built-in capabilities that already exist to give me a good understanding of classified data and what people are, you know, what people are looking at. If not, if I'm going to do this on-prem, how am I going to track that? So I can identify these fields now. I can put them in the report that you saw, but now I'm going to have to log this information somewhere. And like I said, just it's not built in. It's not simple to get to. You can always tell when it's something that Microsoft really doesn't want to talk about because it doesn't show up as not being available. It just doesn't show up at all. Uh, so if you look at docs, it's just not there right now. There's nothing about auditing for SQL Server. However, if you search for auditing with Azure SQL Database, you're gonna, it's a part of what they tell you to do. You got examples of how to do it. So that's how, you know, that's a big difference between the two products right now. Uh, SQL 2019 still doesn't have it at this point. It's a great start. Um, I'm really happy with what I've seen. Otherwise, you know, it gives us the, the data classification. They're just going to keep improving information protection across the environment. It's really important to Microsoft, and we expect to see those changes continue to happen. After you've identified this data, there's other things that you should consider doing. Uh, one of the things I would definitely look at is it will data masking and help you uh, protect the data that you've identified. What are the things that you're doing? How are you planning to, to to let your organization know, hey, well, you know what, we're protecting this data, here's how, here's what we're doing. Um, if you look at, like I said, if you look at data masking or you do more um, the full um, always encrypted capabilities, there are options out there for you to really, really, really protect the data that you've identified. So right now, where does this tool fit? Right now on SQL Server, this tool fits in a position of identifying what potentially could be an issue based on the information policies you set up. And once you've identified it, you still have to take the next step. So you have the report, you can look at the content that's there, you can, you basically can evaluate the risk in your environment. The next steps are not as clear because it doesn't have the built-in auditing. So you're going to really have to build auditing if that's what you need to track to, or um, you're going to have to, you know, add features like um, masking and other things like that to it in order to get there. 
So that's kind of where, you know, when you look at it, this is where it is today. Uh, it, do I wish it was better? Yes. Do I think this is an important first step? Absolutely. And frankly, if you have a really large system, this tool could help you identify fields you weren't necessarily looking at before. I will say that this is actually this classification tool at the moment doesn't evaluate patterns in the data yet, but it does do pattern. It's looking for column names that, and other object names that have classified data in it. So I hope that's a good intro for data classification and management studio and SQL server. I believe that this is a good opportunity to answer any questions that might be out there. As you, as you can tell, uh, I will, uh, you know, I was a, I'll be the first admit there was not as much as I was hoping there would be on data classification, but I think it's a very important first step for Microsoft to make in getting us data classified, uh, getting us an ability to label and classify data. And, and it's backwards compatible always to 2012. So we, you know, at least we have the ability to, to classify data in older systems as well. Any questions, let's see here. Uh, okay, so uh, Henry, looking at your question there, the are you aware of support for current CCPA data security rules? Uh, no, I don't. So this is really just classification. Um, I don't know that we're going to be, those rules are going to be rules that you apply. I'm not sure that's anything programmatically we can do within the environment to actually help that. Uh, because it, like I said, this is, this feels a lot like to me with how Power BI did its first round of data classification is pretty high level. Uh, let's see. Do not see information protection policy adjacent. So uh, let me get out of my slide deck real quick. And I'm going to move this over to the side again. If you're in Management Studio, what you want to do is your task, data discovery and classification. Uh, you're only going to be able to see this. I thought it was an 18.4. Um, that's what the documentation says. I actually have, I'm up to 18.5 because I try to keep it update. You should see these three menu options. Uh, export, if you hit export, it's basically going to say it's going to export this policy as this file name, information protection policy is a JSON file to somewhere that, you know, usually goes default to the documents. So wherever you would dump that is where you should see it. You should see that though. Um, it, it's been the error every time I cancel. Uh, so the classifications and rules are added to that system table we talked about at the beginning. Unless you're running a version older than 2019, then it's added as, um, oh, it's added to, to the extended properties. So they are added to the database, but depending on the tool that's being used, in some cases, some tools actually look at all the extended properties, so you, you could actually pop it up that way or you can run a report against the system table that has the same information. Uh, th there are no tools right now that can really take the, oh, well, I don't know of any tools that can take the information to encrypt the data at this point. Um, that, I, you know, that's, there might be some third party options out there. I didn't do any digging. I was pretty much staying in the SQL server space. So that's something that there may be a tool out there. More importantly, uh, a, co a competent DBA could actually write a script to go identify the data that's been identified this way and then support uh, encryption as needed, that kind of thing. Uh, right click, classify data is the only option. I don't know, sorry, I don't know what to tell you there. Make sure you're at, at maybe upgrade to 18.5. Are you running against a, um, is your database SQL 2019? Uh, Chris, that'd be your only, the other thing to look at. You may not be able to change the JSON file unless it's 2019. Remember, I was running 2019 with 18.5, just so everybody knew the version for this reason. Uh, how far behind the curve is SQL Server 2017? It is the only thing is, is that you can classify the data in um, it goes to extended properties and go to the other table. Otherwise, you should still see a report um, and that type of information. I believe I don't think there's any change there. I'm not running a 2017 database. Uh, SMS, SMS 2017 doesn't exist. So you should be running SQL Server Management Studio uh, 17 at a minimum. I think you need like 17, I don't know which version, 17.5, something like that to actually run this. Steve, so if you're looking at that, um, so 
so basically, okay, so every, so everybody's clear. I'll make sure there's no confusion on this one. Data classification is not a function of SQL Server. It's a function of SQL Server Management Studio. So that, you know, it sounds like there's some people asking specifically around this. Like in my case, I am running SQL Server. Let me pop this guy out of the way again. Uh, I am running SQL Server Management Studio version 18.5. Four. Oh, I'm running 18.4 on this box. I was running 18.5 on a different box. So this is the version of Management Studio I'm running. That doesn't matter what version of SQL Server you're running. Just so everybody's clear, if you're not familiar with how the new, new keys works, go download the newest version of SQL Server Management Studio. It is being released on a different cycle from SQL Server itself. So you should always be download. You know, it's always best if you can download the latest version because it's backwards compatible pretty much forever. Um, at least in 2012. So if you connect to a 2012 database, and I don't have any other database instances running on my end. I don't think I do anyways. Uh, no, because I'm only running the one instance here. Um, I'm not running any other SQL Server instances. It should show up as a different SQL Server version. You should be able to go to the database within that. So if it's 2012 through 2017, you should be able to right click and go to tasks, see data discovery and classification. At a minimum, you should be able to classify your data. So that's what Microsoft's committed support to. I believe it will do a report. Um, I'm not looking at one. Like I said, I'm looking at SQL Server 2019. The information policies may only be available in 2019 and in the current eight version of 18 of uh, Magic Studio. So it kind of gets messy because they're, they're two different things now. Uh, let me see here. Sorry, let me scroll down. Um, if you are running Management Studio 2012, there will not be anything in there. You need to be running the new download version of Management Studio. So if you're not familiar with that, I would go search for SQL Server Management Studio download and you'll be able to use it with your 2012 database. We do it all the time. It actually has made our job as consultants a lot easier because I only need is one version of Management Studio and it works with all the, the, all the supported versions of SQL Server. So I highly recommend that because you get tooling that's not available in any other, you know, in other pieces like we're talking about here. All right, I think I've handled most of the questions. I'm gonna hand this back to Crystal. Thanks so much for today. Oh. Uh, yeah, so you you would import it back in. Sorry, Shri Kathan, really quick. Um, you go back to tasks, data discovery. You basically use set to import that new file because it's going to ask you for a file location. So if I hit set, it's going to tell me, hey, go find me a, a file that matches this. And so I, had, I can do this one here and say open. And it's validated my policy and set it to, the, to whatever I have. So, all right. Crystal, handing it back to you now. Awesome. Okay, perfect. No worries at all. Um, did you already get through all the questions? I see some new ones being added to as we speak. Uh, oh, I thought I got through them all. Nope, I think we're through everything here. Okay. So. Yeah, I was just like, I just see some at the last minute. All right, perfect. So I just want to thank everybody so much for coming in um, and listening into our webinar. Um, Steve, thank you so much for hosting. We greatly appreciate it. And if you guys have any DBA questions or um, please feel free to reach out to or any questions about the webinar, please feel free to reach out to myself or Steve will be more than happy to help you. You guys will receive a link in your email box tomorrow um, for the webinar. If you guys are looking for any of our past webinars, you can also visit us on YouTube at Primated Works and you can go under free training and see all of our webinars there. Um, and like I said, thank you. I hope you guys have a rest of your good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. So um, thank you so much for joining and you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.